Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We are continuing on with our chapter five lessons. This is episode two in RH Discovery. It's lesson 77. In RH Elevate, it's lesson 70. We're going to be going through the Murmur Diff Song OR today. All right, let's get started. So materials again for today's lesson. If you haven't gotten those already, um, make sure you have something to write with. A whiteboard marker is best, but if you don't have a whiteboard marker, you can always use a crayon, marker, pencil, whatever you have available lying around. You can use it on a piece of paper. If you do have a whiteboard marker, but you don't have a whiteboard, you can always use something being a little bit more creative. You can use a window, a mirror, a plastic plate, anything that has that surface that you can write on and erase. Uh, you can use a glove or sock or anything to erase your board. I have a regular eraser, um, but you can again be creative with that. Just make sure you have something so you're not making your hands dirty. So with that, let's get started on today's lesson. Again, we do teach to mastery, so making sure that you have done the previous lessons is really important so you know how to do all the markings and things like that. So let's get started. We are going to start with a review. We always like to start with a review so that we can remember the things that we've learned previously. Last lesson, we worked with the Murmur Diphthong AR. So we are going to work on uh, a review activity that works with uh, those Murmur Diphthongs. So, or with that Murmur Diphthong, it's just one. Um, so AR, in this word, we're going to play a game called Change This Word. So I'm going to show you an example of this, and then we'll do this with three different words, and then we'll move on to our instruction piece of the lesson. So change this word, we have the word art. Now with this activity, um, your job is to change one letter in this word or add a letter um, to create a new word out of this word art. So for example, if I wanted to add a letter to the beginning of this word, I could build the word cart. Now, if I wanted to get more points than just one point, I could actually include a blend. So if I do a blend instead, like the word smart, I would actually get two points for that, for that word. Um, you could also change the end part of the sound. Um, today, we, are, aren't, we aren't going to be changing the vowel sound because we're only working with that AR sound, that R sound together. All right, so does that make sense? <laughs> All right, let's get started. So our first word is the word spark. So I'm gonna give you a couple, maybe a minute to think about what, how you could change the word spark into another word. So again, you can change one letter from it, you can change it into a different blend, um, change the ending sound, however you uh, want to change that word. When you have your word, you can go ahead and show your board. Um, those of you that are um, just joining us on the recording, you can make sure that you're showing your new word to an adult or somebody that's around, um, or you can just check in and make sure that you've created a new word. Do I need to prove it or just make a new word? You can just write it. Okay. But you're welcome to prove it if you want to. <laughs> All right, Miss Heather, what do you have? The word park. Very good. All right, so the word park is a great one. That's actually the word that I had too, so that's great. All right, let's try another one. Um, so Heather has one point. Let's do the word bar. So again, you can change a letter in the beginning or add a letter, put a blend with it. How's it coming, Heather? Doing. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, go ahead and show your word. Ooh, the word art. So we can take off the B and add a T. Perfect. I put the word spar, um, like if you were going to spar in karate or something like that. So you could add a blend there. So if you're adding a letter, you get a point. If you're adding a blend, you can get two points. So keep track of your points if you'd like. 
You could also add an end to the end of the word and build the word barn. So there's lots of options with that one. All right, last one, we have the word arm. So change something in this word to build a new word. All right, ready? Yes, what word do you have? Ooh, charm, good one. Digraph will be two points too. Let's do, far I did farm, so awesome. All right, Miss Heather, how many points do you have? I have four points. I also have four points. Ooh. <laughs> and those of you out there, however many points you have, great job. Let's keep moving along. So that's our review. So again, the AR says that R sound. So let's move on to today's lesson. Uh, this is the instruction piece. So your job is to listen and pay attention. So you don't need to have any of your materials right now. You can just put everything away and make sure you're paying attention to the lesson. So again, this is our poster that has the 42 sounds of the alphabet. In um, the murmur diphthongs are found right here. We are going to be working on the second part of the murmur diphthongs. We've done the first part last time with AR. Today we're going to be working with OR. Um, you can find this poster under the recording um, that you can download if you want to, to so that you can use it with pra for practice if you need to. Uh, today, again, like I said, we're going to work with OR. So uh, we're going to mark this the same way as we did with our AR. We're going to put an X under that vowel and arc that murmur diphthong together because it is a unit. It's going to stay together with syllabication um, and it's going to uh, show that it's a unit. So OR says the same sound that the um, most common word or is. So it's spelled the same, um, but it also is making that same sound. So let's read this together. When we have OR together, it says or, great. So let's look at this in some words now. So I have the word corn, and I know it says corn because I know all of those sounds, right? So um, we're going to make sure we remember to look after our vowel from now on to see if there's an R there because we're gonna know that it's a murmur diphthong if we have that R following the vowel. So if I go across the bottom of this word, I'm going to mark my vowel. I notice there's an R following it, so I'm gonna arc that um, murmur diphthong together. And that's the only thing that I need to mark in this word because we know that uh, a murmur diphthong is neither long nor short, so we don't have a guardian um, that, that is just a new vowel sound that we're going to make with that so OR says OR. So let's read this word together, everyone. It says corn. Great. So you could plant corn as a crop in your garden. I actually got some seeds for corn to plant in my own garden, and I'm excited for. All right, let's take another look at this word, another word. Uh, if we go from left to right, proving everything that we see, I'm first going to run into that ST blend. So I'm going to arc that together. It's a unit. I see a vowel O, put an X under it. I do notice that there's an R following that, so there is a murmur diphthong. We're going to arc that together. And is this M going to be a, con a guardian consonant, Heather? Not. No, it's not because, again, murmur diphthongs are not long and they're not short, so we're going to make sure that um, that's that new vowel sound that we're going to have. So that's the working vowel in the word, the O-R sound. So let's read this word together. The word says storm great so storm you could have um, a storm you could hear a storm outside um, we haven't had a storm lately but there has been quite a few last month <laughs> so really big storm yesterday here oh really yeah. oh yeah it's different all over the country right <laughs> awesome all right storm so let's look at another word. This word has an SP blend at the beginning this time. Again, we're moving from left to right. I notice there's a vowel O. There's that murmur diphthong. Again, that T is not going to be a guardian because this vowel sound is a new vowel sound. It's not long or short. So we have the word. Everyone read it together. It says sport. What is your favorite sport? Do you have a favorite sport, Heather? Football. Oh, nice. I like soccer. <laughs> I like soccer. My, my boys play soccer, so. All right, let's do, this also works with words with more than one syllable. So let's take a look at a word with multi-syllable and how we might mark this word. 
So again, we're going to go from left to right, and we're going to prove everything across the bottom first. Uh, I notice there's an O vowel. I notice there is a R immediately following that vowel, so it's going to be a murmur diphthong. I now have a vowel E, and then I have an ST blend. Now, I do know that there are two X's, and neither one is crossed out because neither one is silent, so we know there's going to be more than one syllable in this word. If there is more than one working vowel, we have to go back to the beginning of the word and determine where we're going to split that syllable. Now, usually, we have been, well, we have been working with decoding skills one and two, where decoding skill one, one must run, right? In this case, there is actually not a consonant in between the two vowel sounds. Because OR is its own vowel sound, that R is not going to be considered a consonant that would move with the next syllable. So in this case, uh, we would look in between those two vowel sounds, so O, R, and E, and there's nothing following that, or there's nothing in between there. So what we will do in this case is we're going to just split those vowel sounds um, it, between syllables. So our first syllable is actually fully proven because we don't have a long or short vowel sound in there. So my first syllable says four. My second syllable follows which phonetic skill? Do you know which phonetic skill that follows, Heather? It would be phonetic skill two. Absolutely. And if you do want to mark those guardian stars, you, you're, you're welcome to, but we don't have to at this point. Um, so that vowel sounds going to be short, right? So that second syllable says est, and my full word is, read it with me, forest. Yeah, so you could get lost in a forest where there's lots of trees. That would be kind of scary. <laughs> All right, so forest. So if there, again, that murmur diphthong is the vowel sound. So we're not going to have one must run in this case. Now, if we do want to look at a word that does have that guard or does have a consonant in between, let's let's take a look at this word. If we go across from left to right, we notice there's a vowel O and then we have that R immediately following. So we have that murmur diphthong. We have another vowel sound in there and it's the vowel I. Again, there's two working vowels in this word. Neither one is silent. So we're gonna go back to the beginning of our word and determine where our syllable splits. Um, Heather, what do you see is in between our two vowel sounds? So OR is our first vowel sound and I is our second vowel sound. What do we have in between there? A one, that one consonant B. Yeah, that B consonant. So just one consonant is going to, again, run with the next syllable because one must run. So we're going to split our syllable there. Now our first syllable is fully proven. What does it say? Four. Four. All right, good. And my second syllable follows phonetic skill one, proving that vowel short. Again, so we have the syllable bid, and let's read that whole word together. It says forbid. Great, so I forbid you to leave this house. And that's kind of what's happening right now. Everyone's for <laughs> forbidden to leave, right? <laughs> right. Yes. All right, so let's move on to another word, and we'll practice this one. This one, has, again, moving from left to right, we have a blend first, an ST blend. We have a vowel O, and then we have that are immediately following, so we're going to arc those together. It's a murmur diphthong. And we have the vowel Y. Now we know at the end of a word, when, when there's more than one syllable, again, we have two working vowels, so we know there's more than one syllable. Um, we have to go back to the beginning of the word and determine where our syllable split happens. So in between our vowel sounds, there's not a consonant. When we decide it happens when there's not a consonant in between? We just divide immediately after that murmur diphthong. Absolutely, great. And then our first syllable is fully proven, so it says store. Now, remember, in a multi-syllable word, when it ends in a Y, what happens to that sound? We have the sound of... It's like an E, a long E. Yes, a long E. So we're going to put that E in the neck of the vowel, and it's going to be long because it's, there's no consonant following, right? There's no guardian to, to prove it short. It's going to be a long vowel sound. So we have that E sound at the end, and the word is story. story. I would like you to read me a story tonight. My kids love me to read stories to them. All right, let's look at one more word and then we'll get on to our um, adding some suffixes to these words. So across the bottom of this word, if I look, I have one vowel here and another vowel here. Now again, that R is following immediately after that O, so I'm going to arc that together with a murmur diphthong. And what do we have? We have two working vowels in the word. So we're going to go back to the beginning of the word and determine where our syllable splits. What do we have in between our two vowel sounds, Heather? We have two consonants. We do. We have two consonants. And they are the same consonant, but we are still going to two will split, right? So we're going to split right in between those. Um, and if we look at the first syllable 
I noticed that there are there is a, a single guardian, but not only is it a single guardian, it's that silent guardian because it's the same consonant as the one following. So we're going to uh, silence that guardian consonant and, and prove that vowel short. So my first syllable actually says sa. My second syllable is fully proven because again, that consonant um, following the, the murmur diphthong is not going to be a guardian because the murmur diphthong is not long nor short. It is going to be just that or sound. So my second syllable says port and my word is support. I need to put something under my book to support it. All right, so let's look at some words with adding um, a suffix to those words with murmur diphthongs. If I go across the bottom of this word, I notice that I have a vowel O and my R is immediately following. So it's going to be arc together and it's going to be murmur diphthong. That word's fully proven. It says sort. If I add a suffix to the word sort, again, remember we prove the root word first and then we are going to add the suffix after we rewrite the word. So if I add the suffix ed, it becomes the word sorted, right? Remember if it ends with a t, if um, right before the ed there's a t, we have that id sound. So we have sorted. Um, we, how do we mark the uh, suffix, Heather? We underline the suffix. Yeah, we're just going to underline that suffix. So we're not going to reprove the word. We're just going to rewrite the word with the suffix and then underline that suffix. And our word is sorted. So you could sort through something or you could say, I sorted through those clothes yesterday. And that becomes something that is past tense, right? That ed suffix makes something past tense, meaning that it happened before. All right, let's do one more word. I believe there's just one more word. Yep. Uh, let's go across the bottom of this word. I notice there's an ST blend, the vowel O, and immediately following that O is that R. So we're going to arc that murmur diphthong together. This becomes the word storm. Again, that's all we have to mark in that word because the vowel is neither long nor short. And then if we wanted to add a suffix to this word, we're going to rewrite the word storm and add a suffix. Let's add the suffix ED first. And what does this word say, Heather? The word is stormed. Awesome. And we're going to, again, underline that suffix ed. Now we could also add the, um, a different suffix to this word storm. We could add ing this time, underlining it. And what is this word? Storming. Storming. So we have three different versions of the word storm, right? So we have just the word on its own, the root word storm. I heard a storm last night and I was scared. Or we could say it stormed last night, so it's past tense, it happened before. Or we could say it's storming right now, which would mean it's happening currently. So we have all of those words. So let's get some practice with these murmur diphthongs. So again, we're working with OR. I'm going to stop my share so that we can see you really well, and let's practice our, our um, dictation. So third part of our lesson is our dictation practice. Again, I'm going to say the word to you two times. You'll say it back to me two times. It's that give and take, and um, you're gonna catch my word, and then you'll write it down one time, and then we'll, we'll talk about that word and how to mark it. Okay. So here's my first word, hands ready, hands out ready for me to give you my first word is cork, cork. Your turn. Cork, cork. Perfect, go ahead and write the word cork. Again, we're gonna write in list form. So starting at the top of your board and going down each time we write a new word. Make sure you're marking everything from left to right. When you're ready, go ahead and show your board. They stuck a cork in the bottle so nothing would fall out. Awesome. So, Miss Heather, will you explain to us how you marked the word cork? Sure. I marked my vowel, and then I noticed that it was followed by an R, so that's the murmur depth thong, O-R. So I'm going to arc that together, and it's not short or long, so you do not go on top of these words. Awesome. Good. Great explanation. Let's point to that word and read it two times. It says cork, cork. Nice. All right. Let's do another one. Hands ready. My word is thorn, thorn. Your turn. Thorn, thorn. Go ahead and write the word thorn. The rose had a thorn on its stem. Thorn. Think about all the sounds that you're hearing and mark from left to right. Show your board whenever you are ready. 
Awesome. All right, Miss Heather, again, will you explain how you wrote the, or you marked the word thorn? Oh, I noticed I forgot something. This is a voiceless, I'm gonna fix that really quickly. That's a voiceless TH. Great. And I have my marble dip thong O-R, so I arced that underneath. Perfect. All right, let's point to our word, read it two times. It says thorn, thorn. Great job. All right, let's do another one. Hands ready. My word is porch, porch. Your turn. Porch, porch. I love sitting on my porch and watching cars pass by. We like to do that at my house sometimes. I love to do that too. <laughs> Feels good outside. We have to get outside sometimes right now, right? <laughs> or we'll go crazy. All right. All right, Miss Heather, again, will you mar or show us how you mark that word in the okay. order you marked it? Diphthong O-R, so I put an arc underneath, put an X under my vowel, and then I have a digraph at the end, digraph C-H, so I arc that as well. Awesome, and, and digraphs make one sound, right? Not two. But there, no need for a guardian consonant because the murmur diphthong doesn't make a short or long sound. All right, let's point to that word and read it two times. It says porch, porch. porch. All right, let's try a multi-syllable word. Hands ready, my word is format, format. Your turn. Format, format. Go ahead and write the word format. I need to format my paper so it has the right sized font. And that's how big the letters are. Format. So go across this bottom of the word first, finding any blends, digraphs, or vowels. Go back to the beginning of the word to determine where your syllable splits happen. And when you're ready, go ahead and show your board. All right, ooh, we have the same answer. Heather, you wanna explain how you got that answer? Sure, when I come under my word, I have a vowel O and I notice it's followed by an R, so murmur diphthong O, R, keep coming around and coming under, I have another vowel A. So I notice I have two working vowels. So when I go back to the first vowel, I have a one must run there. So I divide there. When I, this is already proven, the first syllable four. When I come around the second syllable, I have a short vowel A, map. The word is for mat. Nice, and so the second syllable follows which phonetic skill? Next skill one. Awesome. All right, let's point to that word, read it twice. It says format, format. Great. All right, let's try another one. Hands ready. My word is record, record. Your turn. Record, record. I want to record my favorite song so I can listen to it later. All right. All right, go ahead and tell us how you marked that word. Okay, mark your vowel E, mark your vowel O, so murmur diphthong O, R. Go back to your first vowel, this is one must run, divide there. This first syllable is going to be a long E, that's phonetic skill three, and the second syllable is already proven, record. Very good, let's read it together twice. It says record, Record. Nice. Now with this word record, I'm going to have us add a suffix to this one. So I'm going to give you our next word. Hands ready. My word is recording. Recording. Your turn. Recording. Recording. I listened to the recording last night. So again, rewrite your word next to record and add the suffix. Okay, what is our suffix that we added? ing, I had to do mine underneath, but. Um, oh, that's okay. Okay, ing. Perfect. Yeah, and what do we do to our suffix? Underline it. Underline, I think I almost underlined my D, so I'm gonna erase that little piece. All right, let's point to it, read it twice. It says recording, recording. recording. Great. All right, let's do one more word. This one's going to be a nonsense word. So here's my nonsense word. It is 
Gore-Tex, Gore-Tex. Your turn. Gore-Tex, Gore-Tex. Go ahead and write Gore-Tex. Ready? Yes. Go ahead and explain to us how you mark the nonsense word Gore-Tex. Okay, so I first put my asterisk because this is a nonsense word, and then I have my diphthong O-R, then my vowel E on the bottom. Go back, and this is one must run, so divide between the R and the T, and go on top of my second syllable to prove my vowel is short. Awesome. Hey, let's point to that word and read it two times. It says Gore-Tex. Gore Great. All right. You ready for the eraser game? Ready. All right. Point to your nonsense word on your page. Let's read it again. Gore-Tex. Gore as you erase it. Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex. Nice. All right. Now, taking a look, let's point to the word that has a suffix. What word has a suffix? Recording. Recording. Go ahead and erase that as you read it. Recording. Nice. Now point to the word that has it's two syllables with a murmured of thong in the beginning. The first syllable. What word is it? Format. Format. Awesome. Yeah, the, the or is in the first syllable and it's multi-syllable. So go ahead and erase that word. Format while you read it. Great. All right, point to the word that ends with a murmur or with a that ends with a digraph. Which word ends with a digraph? Porch. 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 Awesome. Yes, that ch digraph. Go ahead and read that as you erase it. Porch. And point to a word that has two syllables. What word is it? Record. Record. Go ahead and erase record as you read it. All right, and point to the word that rhymes with stork. Excuse me. Which word is it? Cork. Cork, perfect. Go ahead and erase cork as you read it. Cork. And what's left over on our board? Uh, thorn. Thorn, awesome. Go ahead and erase the word thorn. Great job. All right, let's keep going with our lesson. We are now to our transfer activities. So we're gonna move on to our transfer card. And I'm going to pull up my laser pointer and we're going to point and read. So we have name and sound first. So when it's outside of the brackets, we're just saying the name of it. So we're gonna say O-R and inside we're going to read it. We're gonna do that three times. So let's do that together. O-R, or, again, O-R, or, O R or. All right, Heather, will you read these words for me? Corn. And everyone out there too, you read you read along with Heather. Okay, go ahead, Heather. Okay. Corn, sport, porch, sort, torn, corn, fork, born, form. Storm, forest, story, organ, report, support, sorted, absorbing, reporter, storming, exported. Awesome. Now go ahead and read these sentences for me. Nora ate corn on the porch. Who ate corn on the porch? Nora. Ah, awesome. Okay, next sentence. The reporter recorded the story while the rocket was in orbit. Awesome. Who recorded the story? The reporter. And what was the rocket doing? It was in orbit. Nice. All right, next sentence. The sports team is well supported by their fans. Awesome, last sentence. 
In the story, the stork transported the newborn baby. Oh, great. All right, let's play a game. This game is called Mind Reader, and I'm going to show you an example of this before we play with our words. So I have a few words on this whiteboard that's cart, part, born, star, and port. Now with this game, we are going to try and in our brains um, determine what the, the word I'm thinking of is. All right, so I have a word in mind on here. And as we go, I'm gonna kind of do a think aloud for you so that you can see how to play this game. So the first hint, and let me pull, grab my hints real quick so that I know what they are. If I can remember where I stuck them. Oh, there they are on the game board. All right, so the first one is, my first hint, I'm gonna give you four or five clues depending on, um, depending on how we go. Uh, but if you know what the word is before I get to the later clues, you can still guess. Um, but you're gonna try and guess as we go through the clues. So by the end, you should know what the word is, but you can still have in your mind what you think the word might be. So the first one is that there, it is a murmur diphthong word. Now all of these are murmur diphthong words, so I don't need to erase anything yet in my mind. The next, the next hint is it doesn't end with a murmur diphthong. So which one of these doesn't, or does end with a murmur diphthong? Okay. I see the star, right? So I'm gonna think, in my mind, I'm gonna take that word out, right? So I don't need that word anymore on my board. The next one is, the next hint is that it has the O-R murmur diphthong. So if it has the, the O-R murmur diphthong, I know I need to erase the ones that don't, right? So the ones that don't have the murmur, O-R, remember to thong, are part and cart. So in my mind, I'm gonna take those ones away and I'm left with two more. So now I still need to know which one it is. Now you could take a guess and think about which one it is, but my last hint is gonna be, it starts with the letter P. So I know that it's not gonna be the word born, right? So I'm gonna take that one out in my mind. So now I know for sure that the word is port, okay? So that's how this game works. Um, I'm going to give you some hints for this, uh, these larger words. Some of them are larger words. So are we ready to go? Ready. Okay. My first hint is that it is a murmur diphthong word. So up there on the board, we have that in mind. The second clue is this word is two syllables. So think in your mind which of these words have two syllables. All right. The next clue is this word has a suffix in it. Okay. Okay. And my last clue is this suffix is past tense. I know it. All right. So think at home if you know what the word is. And Miss Heather, what word did you get? Um, I think it's parted. That's absolutely right. Yes, it is parted. It is two syllables. It has a murmur diphthong. It has a suffix and the suffix is past tense, right? So it follows all of those, those clues. So this is a fun game to play. You could do this yourself at home as well if you wanted to come up with a few words and give some hints of how that would work. So just a reminder, <clears throat> just because we're done with our lesson doesn't mean that you need to stop practicing your phonics skills. So if you wanted to keep practicing this murmur diphthong OR, you could use the practice page, page 165. You can find this under the video in the links that we have provided. Um, and you could download it if you wanted to so that you could print it. Or if you don't have that option, you could always take a picture of it with your, with your phone um, so that you could use that for later. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so make sure that you're keep, you're keep practicing. Try to get on the software if you can so that you can keep practicing with, with our amazing software, those, those skills that you're working with. If you ever have any questions, remember you can always call us. There's a phone number for us um, and make sure that you get those answers answered. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we hope that you continue to join us for the next part of our lesson, which we can, um, which would be the, the other three um, are controlled vowels or murmur diphthongs, if you want to call them that. So thanks again, and I will see you next time. Thank you, Heather. Thank you.